So let me guess, you are here because your tractor won't start. Or maybe you're having some sort of other electrical issue. Well, I've got good news for you. We might be able to solve it for you today. And even if you haven't had that issue yet, you definitely, definitely want to check out this video because there's a good chance it will happen to you or someone you know in the near future. Let's go. It's going to need to be washed. So this lovely little lady has been running all day yesterday, pretty much from the start of the day to the end of the day. She's been lifting bales, grappling bales, driving across hay fields, hauling this big heavy trailer. She has been a beast. But when we parked her right here and Eric turned off the key to connect her back to the trailer, she refused to go another inch. She refused to have any sort of power whatsoever. Nothing in here lit up. It's just dead. Nothing. Like none of the lights, nothing. So, so we went over here to check the fuses. Now there's a couple different locations for fuses. Um, right here we have this fuse out. This one has three. One, two, three. This one, I can't tell if that's, I think that's a 30 amp. The yellow one is a 60 amp and this one was a 60 amp. And it was only this fuse that was blown. Now these fuses are not that common. We had to go to the auto parts store to get them. They only had two in stock. Upon replacing the fuse, it blew instantly. A little bit of alarming, but after a little research, we said, well, hey, we'll disconnect the battery terminal, put the fuse in, reconnect the battery terminal, and it should be fine. Still blew just by putting it in there. So, um, as soon as this battery terminal was reconnected, that blew again instantly. Now, when we take a multimeter, we can connect it to one side and it's getting 12 volts of power, the other side is getting zero. So we know that one side's getting power, the other side's not. But why is it blowing? All right, first off, there's a couple of things that you guys have to keep in mind. This is not going to necessarily be an issue on a hydrostat tractor, at least this specific issue. Now you will still have wiring issues on any smaller compact tractor. That just seems to be the ongoing case. When we first had this issue, I wondered, was it a TYM issue? So I began hitting the internet and guess what I found? It's not specific to TYM, it's specific in general to smaller tractors. And actually the bigger contenders with more wiring issues were the big name brands like New Holland. So let's take a look at what caused this specific problem on this specific tractor. Oh yeah. And that's a hot wire too. That's what shortened out. Now Eric was able to call our TYM dealer directly and see what the possible issue was. And he was the one who actually alerted Eric to check the ignition switch. Now this is a throttle tractor or, your, or a gear tractor. So if you wanna go faster, you're gonna pull your hand gear back. This tractor also has the option of a foot throttle. So you can push this down to go faster too. You can see it doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. This one's got a wider range of motion. Now, this isn't gonna be an issue unless you were doing a lot of fast and slow work, such as loader work. Most loader works can be done with a hydrostat tractor, but for us, like I explained, a gear tractor made more sense. It's more versatile. Unfortunately, I presented with this issue. Now, if you choose to use the hand throttle and you're continually going back and forth to go faster and slower, there is actually a bolt right down in there that attaches to your hand throttle that rubs the wiring on the ignition switch. So what do we do? Cut that off and then re-tape that. It's gotta that. be re-wrapped. I don't know what. I'm What's guessing on? it's on that throttle. Guarantee it's rubbing on that throttle. Well, there's a screw in there too that it could be rubbing on underneath. That's what shortened it out, dude. So it was like this. So that's the same size as that throttle. Shorten out on that throttle. That Guaranteed. Didn't take very long, did it? Let's throw that fuse in there and see if it pops. When it rubs enough, it wears a hole through it. And every time that hand throttle 
that metal bolt connects with the wiring on that ignition switch and causes a short, which causes your fuse to blow, which turns the entire tractor off. Now this might seem like a bad thing, but a lot of models, including the new Holland models, they don't have a fuse in line. So that means your tractor is going to catch on fire, which is a very common issue with smaller tractors. TYM saw this issue with other manufacturers and said, hey, let's throw a couple safety items in. So there are a lot of safety checks on this tractor to make sure that your tractor doesn't blow up, catch on fire, or create irreversible damage. So you take your key out, this twists off, this comes off, and then this little thing right here pops out through the bottom. It's literally that easy. So if you're concerned that you're having a wiring issue and you have a hand throttle like on our model right here, pop that ignition switch out, it'll drop through the floor and there's enough cord that you can check it out. It's not gonna short out now that we got this pulled out. It's not touching oh, any metal. Oh, I see what you're saying, okay. Okay. So if we throw the fuse in and it don't pop, that was the problem. Guaranteed that was shorting out, guaranteed. Look at that. Yeah, that's got to be it, because everyone else was saying shorts were... Look at it, because it rubbed right through the... Right, right down the metal. The, yeah. Gosh. All right, where's <sighs> that fuse at? You want to put it in or not me too? Oh, uh, you can put it in. Cross your fingers. <laughs> you better Most say likely. A, just say a little prayer before I put this in. Cross I... your fingers, dude. All right, you ready? Yep. Should we unhook the battery first? Um... I don't know. <sighs> How fast did it blow? Right away. It was sparking when I was putting it in. The last time, but not this time. Not this time. All right. Well, try so <laughs> I'll let you try the key since uh, you pulled it out. Just do it. Just do a little turn, so we get see if there's any power. Oh, baby! There you are. Holy crap! And I thought it was my <laughs> fault. It was your fault. You're the last one to use it. <laughs> but you were also the one to figure out the solution. So good Thank for goodness. you. <laughs> I'm gonna call him back and let him know. Yeah. That brings us to issue number two. The hand throttle was now stuck. Help! My tractor throttle is stuck and it won't move. So what do you do when your throttle is stuck and won't move on your tractor? Well, if you just got done fixing your problem with your ignition, there's a good chance you now have to fix another one. Now my theory is that the arcing is actually what causes the throttle to stick. I can't prove it, but as young as this tractor is, that's most likely the scenario. So, while you have your main center open, we're going to pry this guy back. I actually don't have him. He actually popped back into place. But, here's our throttle right here. You can see that he's now working just fine. It's got two spots right here and right here where it's going to contact when it's at its maximum point. And if you're in doubt, you can always push the floor pedal down and make sure that that's as far down as it will go. So if we chase our cable lines, it's actually pretty easy. Here's the hand throttle line. Here's the floor cable line. And they both come to right here. Actually, I got this guy off because I was checking them out to see what was going on. So we've got these little rubber grommets that help seal your throttle. Actually, they both probably should be screwed back on. It just helps keep gunk and stuff out. So this is our throttle right here. So if you pull it back. We can see that they're actually set at a slight angle to each other. So that tells me that the floor throttle is meant to go down a lot more than the hand throttle. But what we ended up doing, there's two things that I ended up having to do. The first recommended solution was to spray WD-40 on this cable line right here. I'm going to push him back up there. Now he's got a rubber grommet sleeve on him too, which you're not going to be able to see. I'm going to screw him back up in there. So you're going to spray as close to this screw cap as you possibly can. 
So that's where it comes out that end. So you're gonna spray some WD-40 or PB Blaster. PB Blaster is my tool of choice down in there. Um, spray it and just start working that hand throttle. You might have to pull a little bit hard on the hand throttle. Don't muscle it too much, just kind of work it in. And uh, then finally, it should go. But if it doesn't, <sighs> You should be golden. Don't forget to tighten everything back up and put everything back together. Now, if you're wondering how to take the dash off your tractor, um, there are bolts everywhere. So we loosened the bolts on this. There's two here, and I think there might be one on the other side. And then we take all the bolts out of this. There's two here, there's none on the top, and then there's one here and one on the other side. You have to pull this off. You push this backwards out and uh, you're good to go. That's literally all we had to do. Fortunately, one of the nice things about this TYM tractor is you literally can access pretty much everything on it. Compared to every other tractor I've worked on, this one has really been great. So I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna tighten it back up, get this thing back together so we can hit the road making hay.